a story of overlooked dedication and brilliance. In the world of science, some discoveries shake the very foundations of what we know. But behind every groundbreaking moment, there's often a story of determination, resilience, and sometimes of being overlooked. Today, we are diving into one of those stories. Meet Lisa Meitner, the pioneer of nuclear fission. Lisa Meitner was a brilliant physicist whose pioneering work helped unlock the secrets of nuclear fission the science behind nuclear energy and the atom bomb. Despite working alongside Otto Hahn, a German chemist, it was he who won the Nobel Prize for the discovery of nuclear fission, while Lisa Meitner's contributions were largely ignored. So how did this incredible physicist cracked the code of nuclear vision, and why was her name left out of the spotlight? Hi, future scientists, I am Adam. Join me as we uncover the life, struggles, and scientific breakthroughs of Lisa Meitner, the woman who helped change the course of scientific history. Early curiosity and breaking barriers. Born on November 7, 1878, in Vienna, Austria, Meitner was a third of eight children in a Jewish family. She had a love for learning early on. As a child, she showed a keen interest in science, conducting experiments to observe how light interacted with different surfaces around her. Even though women were not officially allowed to register in a university with her parents' support, Meitner enrolled at the University of Vienna in 1901 to study physics under the legendary physicist Ludwig Boltzmann, who made significant contributions in statistical mechanics and thermodynamics. By 1906, Meitner earned her doctorate. She became the second woman to receive a doctorate in physics from the University of Vienna. In 1907, Meitner set off for Berlin to study with Max Planck, the father of quantum theory. Planck was generally opposed to women pursuing higher education, but he recognized Meitner's exceptional talent and allowed her to attend his lectures. Soon, Meitner became Planck's assistant. The start of an incredible partnership Meitner first met Otto Hahn during a conference in 1907 at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Chemistry, which is now the Max Planck Institute for Chemistry. Hahn invited Meitner to collaborate with him in his research. Women were barred from the main building at that time, so Hahn offered her laboratory space in a wood shop near the institute that had a separate entrance. For some time, Meitner had to use the restroom in a nearby restaurant, since there was none in the woodshop. Eventually, things got much better for Meitner at the Institute. During World War I, 1914 to 1916, Meitner served as an X-ray nurse in the Austrian Army, later returning to her laboratory. Meitner and Hahn worked together for 30 years at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute. With Meitner's expertise in physics and Hahn's in chemistry, they made an incredible team. So incredible, in fact, that in 1918, they discovered protactinium-231, a stable isotope of protactinium with a half-life of about 32,760 years. Protactinium is a rare radioactive element with the atomic number 91, known for being highly toxic and having limited practical applications due to its scarcity and radioactivity. In 1922, Meitner became an official university lecturer, but Berlin's playful press reported her inaugural talk on cosmic physics as cosmetic physics. 
At the outset, this mix-up may seem funny, but it highlights the challenges Meitner faced as a pioneering woman in science and also shows how society often underestimated her groundbreaking work. Auger effect. In 1923, Meitner made a discovery about radiation-less electron transitions, known today as the Auger effect, which can be explained in a four-step process. Step 1. Electron ejection. When an atom absorbs enough energy, one of its initial electrons gets knocked out, creating an empty space. Step 2. Electron transition and energy release. An electron from a higher energy level drops down to fill the vacancy, releasing energy in the process because the outer shell electron is moving from a high energy to a low energy state. Step 3. Energy transfer. Instead of emitting the energy as x-rays which happens in normal electron transitions the energy is transferred to another outer shell electron step 4 electron ejection the energy transferred to the second electron causes it to be ejected from the atom and this electron is known as an auger electron So the Auger effect essentially involves the emission of an electron instead of radiation when an atom's electron transitions from a high to a low energy state. Although it is named after Pierre Victor Auger, a French scientist who discovered it in 1925, Meitner's contributions were crucial. In 1926, Meitner became the first female physics professor at the University of Berlin. Escaping Nazi Germany, Meitner's flight to freedom. In April 1933, the German Nazi government enacted a law forcing Jews, including those in academia, out of their jobs. Eminent Jewish scientists left Germany. Einstein came to the US. He took a position as a professor of theoretical physics at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey. Meitner's nephew, Otto Frisch, a physicist, found refuge in the UK as a professor of physics at the University of London. Meitner, being an Austrian citizen, was not an immediate danger. and so she continued her work at the institute things took a difficult turn in 1938 when austria was annexed by nazi germany meitner's austrian passport was not valid anymore as a jewish woman lisa meitner faced immediate danger under the regime's anti-semitic law meitner received invitations to work in denmark from her friend niels bohr as well as offers from Switzerland and the US. However, the Nazis enforced laws preventing scientists from leaving Germany. Meitner knew that she had to leave behind her long-standing research career in Berlin and flee from Germany. Colleagues in the Netherlands arranged for Meitner's entry visa, while her German peers, including Hahn, secretly planned her escape. As per the escape plan, on July 11, 1938, Dirk Koster, a Dutch scientist, arrived in Berlin and stayed with a friend. The element hafnium was discovered by Koster and George D. Hevesy, a Hungarian scientist, in 1923. On July 12, Meitner went to the institute and Hahn informed her of the escape plan. To avoid suspicion, she followed her usual routine, working until late. Since Meitner had to leave in haste, Hahn gave her a diamond ring from his mother for emergency expenses during her escape and exile. With just 10 marks in her purse, on July 13, Meitner met Koster at the train station, pretending it was a chance encounter. They traveled discreetly on a quiet route 
and crossed into the Netherlands. The Dutch officials allowed her to cross without an exit visa. After spending some time in the Netherlands, Meitner traveled to Copenhagen, where she stayed with Niels Bohr and his family, and then moved to the Nobel Institute for Physics in Stockholm, Sweden. A collaborative discovery, Meitner, Frisch, and nuclear fission. Despite the challenges of exile, lack of access to a proper laboratory, and limited support at Main Siegbahn's Institute, which is a Nobel Institute for Physics in Stockholm, where she faced both professional isolation and gender discrimination. Meitner persisted in her scientific work and kept working with Hahn via mail correspondence. In December 1938, during a secret meeting in Copenhagen, Meitner encouraged Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, a German chemist, to conduct further tests on neutron-bombarded uranium. Hahn and Strassmann continued their experiments in Germany and discovered that the result was a lighter element barium. Hahn was puzzled and asked Meitner for an explanation. Here is an analogy to explain the hypothesis versus the actual result. Imagine throwing pebbles at a large block of clay. Some pebbles would stick, making the block heavier, while others might chip off small bits, causing it to lose a little mass. Now, picture one pebble striking the block so perfectly that it splits the whole thing almost in half. That's essentially what happened when Hahn and Strassmann fired neutrons at uranium. While walking in the snow with her nephew Otto Frisch in Sweden, Meitner realized that Bohr's liquid drop model of the atomic nucleus could explain the results. They quickly worked out that when uranium nuclei were hit by neutrons, they could stretch and split into two smaller nuclei, barium and krypton, releasing neutrons and a massive amount of energy. Meitner realized that when the U-235 nucleus split into two smaller nuclei, there was a loss of mass. And using Einstein's E equals mc squared, the missing mass was converted to an enormous amount of energy. Meitner and Frisch coined the term nuclear fission for this process. Key steps of U-235 fission. Step 1. Neutron absorption. A slow-moving neutron is captured by the U-235 nucleus, forming an excited U-236 nucleus. Step 2. Nucleus splitting. The U-236 nucleus becomes unstable and splits into two smaller nuclei, commonly barium-141 and krypton-92, although other combinations of fission fragments are possible. Step 3. Energy release. One U-235 nucleus undergoing fission releases approximately 200 million electron volts of energy. Hahn and Strassmann published their experimental results in January 1939. Meitner and Frisch published their theoretical explanation in February 1939. This groundbreaking discovery of nuclear fission marked a transformative moment in the field of nuclear physics. Their discovery of fission not only revolutionized the understanding of nuclear reactions, but also set off a chain of events that led to the development of nuclear weapons during World War II, culminating in the Manhattan Project and the atom bomb. In 1942, Meitner declined an invitation to join the Manhattan Project, opposing the development of nuclear weapons. Hahn's Nobel Prize and the Overlooked Contribution. 
In 1944, Hahn alone received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry for the discovery of nuclear fission, with no mention of Meitner's essential theoretical contributions. Meitner did not receive the recognition she rightfully deserved. Even though Meitner was nominated for the Nobel Prize 49 times, 19 times in chemistry and 30 times in physics, she never received the award. Despite her pivotal role in explaining the physics behind fission and naming the process, her contributions were downplayed and overlooked, likely due to a combination of her forced exile, her gender, and the marginalization she faced as a Jewish woman. Hans Nobel recognition was seen by many as incomplete and unjust, particularly because Meitner's insight had been crucial in interpreting the experimental results. Visit to the United States. In 1946, Meitner visited the United States warmly welcomed by scientists and academics. She lectured at Princeton, Harvard, and Columbia on her groundbreaking work in nuclear fission. Even though she took no part in the making of the atom bomb, she still met with key figures from the Manhattan Project, where she reiterated her opposition to the destructive use of nuclear energy and advocated for its peaceful applications. Delayed recognition, Max Planck Medal and the Enrico Fermi Award. In 1949, Meitner received the Max Planck Medal, the highest award for theoretical physics given by the German Physical Society for her scientific contributions. In 1966, an attempt to address the historical oversight of Meitner's exclusion from the Nobel Prize came when Meitner, Hahn and Strassman were jointly honored with the prestigious Enrico Fermi Award for their collective contributions to the discovery of nuclear fission. Though this recognition was meaningful, it came late in Meitner's life and could not fully redress the omission of her name from the Nobel Prize. Meitner eventually retired in Cambridge, England in 1916, where she lived until she passed away on October 27, 1968. A legacy that endures. In 1992, Element 109 was named Meitnerium in her honor. Having an element named after Meitner immortalizes Meitner's legacy in science, symbolizing a permanent, universal impact that endures through the very building blocks of matter, far beyond the reach of even the Nobel Prize, a trailblazer for women in science. Today, many regard Lisa Meitner as the most significant woman scientist of the 20th century. Meitner's story reminds us of the collaborative nature of science and the importance of recognizing those who have been overlooked. So keep exploring, questioning, and learning, just like Meitner did. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment for more educational science content. Happy learning! Thank you!